Hello and welcome back to our next webinar. I'm really happy to have you all here again. To, now we've got Evan Schwartz from AMCS who will tell us a little bit about cybersecurity and how this can and will affect our business, especially in the recycling industry in the next couple of years. So I would say let's have a look at this, have fun and thank you for being here. So guys, I, I appreciate the time today on this very important topic. Um, I, I, I loathe to welcome you to the security race, some of it call a war, uh, but that's what we've been facing. Uh, it's been ever prevalent uh, in the media, in the news. We're seeing attacks across our industry very specifically, across the environmental services and the waste services. So today we're gonna to keep it at a high level. We're going to really touch on some of the business impacts of this, um, but, uh, there will be an opportunity for you to reach out if we need to get down to more technical uh, solutions at the end. But when we look at our organizations, we are finding that our customers are becoming increasingly more responsible for their entire enterprise systems, even beyond those that don't necessarily exist uh, on-prem. Uh, they are becoming more and more responsible for devices out in the field, overlapping technologies in the cloud and satellite systems, and in, a, in an unparalleled level of connectivity uh, that has been brought out a lot uh, and has changed a lot since last year's pandemic. So with so many devices and different user groups at different levels, whether they're vendors, their remote employees, their in-house employees, and with so many different devices, whether they're personally owned devices or computer or company authorized devices, we're, we're finding that a lot of our customers are challenge with being able to meet that from a security standpoint. And it's, it's, not, it's not unexpected, right? When you look at what your core competencies are, your core competencies are in the waste and recycle industry. Um, you didn't really start your business to become a cybersecurity company, uh, nor do you want to put you know, billions of dollars of investment into making your company a, a cybersecurity. But what we are running into is that the traditional security models, the ones that we've lived behind our local firewalls, our perimeter-based security, they're not working anymore. Um, they're not working across our changing enterprise landscape. They're not working across uh, the evolution of our technology. It's not keeping up with our security profile. And uh, later in the presentation, we'll take a look at some of those examples. Next slide, please. So we look at what are some of the security threats that we're seeing in the waste management companies, environmental services, because we're seeing direct targeted attacks. Um, there's a high cost to these attacks. Uh, you have to ask yourself, what would, what would be the cost to my business if my business was non-operable for over a month, two months, maybe three months? Would I still be in business at the end of that? Um, then you have to figure out well, what is my responsibility, the accountability on my, my, my industry, my data, my company to protect the data that I have about my customers? If my data is breached, my customer data is exposed and that data is used against them, am I responsible for that? Do I want to be responsible for that? Am I prepared to protect that data? So one of the chief misconceptions that we're seeing across the landscape is that I'm more secure if I'm on prem. Um, but we're, we're seeing that that doesn't hold true across the industry. The perimeter security that's common to most of our, uh, our customers that are still running home, uh, home brew or on-premise systems is very inadequate, dated, and not evolving as fast as the, the attacks and the threats that are being waged against them. Next slide. So how do we navigate this shifting world? I mean, when you look at just the past year where we've, you know, we've had to shift to a remote workforce overnight, if you weren't prepared for it, um, in some cases, it was, it was a company ending event. There was no way to get out of my brick and mortar dependency. Uh, if you had to go back to pay for today, could you still run your business, right? You have to start looking at what are the cost factors of that? What are my conventional securities? How am I backing up my data? If an event happened, how long would it take for me to get stood back up? 
Um, am I running regular disaster recovery scenarios? What is, what is my security plan when or if that happens? And then what would be the total cost of that breach? As we talk to a lot of our customers and partners today, and we're, we're really trying to educate them on the risks of these breaches, these ransomwares, the, the cost is immeasurable. In some cases, the cost is total. So investing in a security plan ahead of that breach is, is extremely justified and is, is easy uh, to implement if you've got the right partners to help you do it. Again, understand what your core competencies are. Understand where your investment needs to go. You want to run a business. Do you really want to want to run a security company? Next slide. So when you look at all of the nodes in your system, when you look at your, if as we're moving out to sensors on the vehicles, we're, we're putting mobile devices, we're putting cameras everywhere that's all accessible by IP. Uh, when you look at the sheer remote offices, vendors that we have to bring in, uh, contractors, uh, subcontractors that we're bringing in, all of these diverse user groups across all of their applications. Some applications use a single sign-on, some are using soft login. The way I log into my mobile device isn't the way I log into my ERP device, isn't the way that I'm managing the security around an IoT connected device. It is, it's so vast across your organization, most companies don't even have visibility to what their security posture or the perimeter looks like. And even if they had visibility, they don't have the response time or the mechanisms in place to respond to a threat. Next slide. So to me, the best way to really kind of send home this message is to really talk through some examples. And we're gonna use, um, you know, small town USA, uh, waste and recycling company. Next slide, Will. So, this is a real example. We're not going to shame or call it anybody's names. That's not what today is about. But we're going to get as close to what really happened as we can and what the RCA on how it happened. And when you realize how easy it was to get into this company and nearly bring it to its knees, it was a 30 plus year company that nearly went out of business due to this event. They breached all of the security on the firewall, they breached all the protective measures on the perimeter by a simple action, an email. They, a customer had sent an email into this waste hauling company asking the CSR for help with a bill and had the bill attached. The CSR clicked to open that bill and it stalled the business for 35 days, brought them all the way back to paper. Cost them tens of thousands of dollars in, in ransom payments of which they never did recover all of their data. Um, when they needed their disaster recovery plan to be effective, it wasn't. Uh, the company at that time hadn't run regular DR tests. Uh, there were problems with their off property backups. It was tape driven. Uh, they were writing over the same tapes over and over again. There was a litany of issues, but all of their investment on virus protection, all of their investment on their perimeter all their investment was essentially breached because a CSR was doing what they thought was their job, helping one of their customers reconcile a bill. Beyond that, the data that was taken out of their systems for some of their national and T1 accounts was then used to lodge attacks out from there. So some of that data, some of their uh, trusted B2B connections to some of their high-end customers was compromised and used to lodge attacks elsewhere under that customer's name. So from a reputation standpoint, this particular customer is likely going to take years to recover. Next slide. So we look at some of the high profile events in the news. So the, the Irish Health Services Executives IT system was compromised, their data was compromised. And it's looking at what it would take to retrofit or fix all of that amid the crisis is going to be excess north of 100 million euros. Some of patients' very protected medical records were exposed out into the public. So from an accountability standpoint, who's responsible for that? If your data, your customer's data is breached and used in, from bad actors in a nefarious way, you, you have a responsibility and accountability to protect that data. 
And, you know, are you currently positioned to invest millions or tens of millions of dollars in cybersecurity, right? If you're running an on-premise system that contains sensitive data, uh, you're not in a security race, you're in the security war. You're on the front lines of this war and it's your responsibility to protect us. You know, the Scottish Environmental Agency is seeing that it's going to take years to fix that breach. Next slide. The Colonial Pipeline attack, you know, $4.4 million was paid in ransom for the attack hackers. There is an incentive for it. We're seeing regulations and compliancy to the tune of 217 regulations a day coming from a variety of oversight and compliance committees that are levying very high fines against breaches and security breaches. So when you look at the total landscape and you look at all the systems you're responsible for managing, when you look at all of the user groups that you're responsible for securing and the data that is within your protection, how confident are you in your security plan? That's really the question that needs to be asked. And then what, what, what can we do to really start to enable and maybe offload some of that security and accountability responsibility off of your shoulders? That's really gotta be part of your security strategy is am I the best steward for this data? Next slide. So right off the bat is having all of this stuff on prem, you could build the biggest wall in the world and someone can get into an email, a very innocent looking email from one of your customers that have been compromised, sends an email into your customer service base and it doesn't get caught. It could be that simple, right? When you look at the fact that now your new world is a significant part of your workforce is working remote with their own phones and their own laptops or on their own internet, and that may have access to other com compromised systems within their home, the, the concept of trying to protect yourself against all of these threats and as quickly as they're evolving is, is daunting to say the least. When you look at a cloud strategy though, you can start to realize that at the cloud, there's a couple of immediate benefits. Is for instance, as we partner with Microsoft, Microsoft is a security company, right? One of the reasons we've partnered with Microsoft in a cloud strategy is they have security teams that spend millions or billions of dollars protecting their environments, protecting their systems. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the presentation. They block attacks before they can get in or before they can be perceived. Or the second that they're, they've are they hit or attacked, you know, artificial intelligence or sophisticated defense measures kick in and begin to spark the attack, destroy the invasive code, because within the cloud structure, there's no base of operations for an attack. On-prem, you've got bare metal servers, you've got VM servers, you've got boxes that attacks can be launched from. In the cloud, in true cloud services architecture, you don't have those bases with which an attack can be launched. And there's, there's really a whole litany of, of benefits for going to the cloud in addition to being able to have that partner that is investing in security, has designed security from the ground up in the entire infrastructure. If you think about the structure of on-premise servers versus cloud, security was an afterthought. Servers came first, and then everyone tried to figure out how to secure them. The cloud infrastructure, particularly with Azure and Microsoft, is security was thought of first, and then the infrastructure was built on top of it. Next slide. So that gets us into the AMCS partnership with Microsoft. Next slide, please. With an AMCS plus Microsoft, what we gain is the entire force of security that Microsoft has invested, which we'll hear in just a minute. We, they're leading the cloud solutions for Azure, the world class across globally, across pretty much anything dealing in the cloud, as well as the security perimeter, as well as the infrastructure, as well as artificial detection on these, these attacks. We get all of that as part of the infrastructure with which we can set our systems inside of, right? It's, it's a very, very close and protected environment that really lends itself well to not only having 
out of the box continuity, being able to do on-site backups, geolocation backups, I get within that architecture, I get the perimeter security, I get the ability to inspect malicious code, bad actors delivering code into the system, which gives me a measure of protection from even trusted sources that I, I didn't have an opportunity to vet down at that level is being vetted in real time in the cloud. The investment within this security architecture and the ability to move these systems off-prem and into a cloud infrastructure alleviates some of the accountability of that data and allows a, a security partner like AMCS and Microsoft to share that responsibility. 